Here's what you need to know before you see X-Men Days of Future Past. It all begins with Charles Xavier. Charles is a telepath, which means he can read minds, and if the person is weak enough, he can take over their mind. We meet him when he's a young man, he's a bit of a rebel. He ends up creating a machine called Cerebro, which channels his mental energy so that he can find mutants all over the world. Maybe I should specify what a mutant is. A mutant is someone that their DNA gives them some sort of crazy ability. The entire X-Men universe is based on the idea of mutants. Charles Xavier hopes that someday, humans and mutants can live together in harmony. We counter this with a man named Eric Lencher. He's also known as Magneto. Magneto is very powerful, able to control metal, and he believes that mutants should be superior to mankind. Eric is clever and wears a helmet so that Charles cannot control or read his mind. They work somewhat together throughout the film X-Men First Class, which they come together, they create the Cerebro machine, and then they find their first group of young mutants. Some of these include Beast, played by Nicholas Holt. Beast starts out as a, a, a guy, a normal guy, uh, but he's able to kind of do gymnastic things, he's very strong, uh, but it eventually takes over his physical appearance and he becomes a blue furry monster, uh, man, whatever. Another young mutant they find, her name is Mystique. She is able to shape shift into whatever she wants. Uh, she's played by Jennifer Lawrence uh, when she's young and as she grows up, Rebecca Remain. No Stamos. Mystique tends to side with Magneto, but she has a bit of a history because she was raised with Charles Xavier. So there's some conflict. We also have a young mutant named Havoc who can shoot powerful energy from his chest. Uh, I don't believe he's going to play a vital part in Days of Future Past, but I know that he's in it, so that's who that is. Basically in X-Men First Class, they disagree on a bunch of stuff, they end up fighting. Uh, Magneto ends up becoming imprisoned by the government, and Charles Xavier ends up getting hit by a random bullet and is now unable to walk. But he is seen walking in X-Men Days of Future Past. I'm not sure how that happens. Now, cut to current day. We're now talking about the X-Men films uh, of the early 2000s. Professor X has now built an entire school to help young mutants learn how to use their powers. Beast is now working for the government and trying to help with human and mutant relations. Uh, he's played by Kelsey Grammer. Some outstanding mutants of this time include Cyclops, played by James Marsden, uh, who could shoot optic lasers out of his eyes. He's kind of a Boy Scout, kind of the traditional leader of the group. We also have Jean Grey, who can uh, move things with her mind, telekinesis. She is very powerful, but we don't see this until the later X-Men movies. We also have Storm, played by Halle Berry. Uh, she can control the weather, super powerful. Yeah. Now in the original X-Men film, we meet Wolverine, who's the star of our story. Surprise. Wolverine wanders into Charles' school. He meets all these teachers, he meets the students, uh, and he eventually becomes an X-Men. Wolverine's mutant power is that he has an incredible healing ability. Uh, he can absorb bullet wounds, uh, he can get limbs removed from his body. Uh, he can survive basically anything. Because of this power, he was experimented on uh, a long, long time ago, and he was given metal bones. Basically, metal was co covered his entire skeleton. Uh, now, because of that, he's super strong and... Uh, he has claws that jut out from his hands. Uh, because he can heal, he's able to do this repeatedly without any sort of consequence. This incredible healing also means that he doesn't age. So he's been living for a long, long time and he's gone through a lot. In the X-Men Origins Wolverine movie, we see some of this past, uh, but the movie is generally not great, uh, so I don't think you need to see it. It's not going to reference any of those things. So let's move on. Now, Wolverine helps to defeat Magneto in the original X-Men movie. Uh, he joins the X-Men and he falls in love with Jean Grey, who is in love with Cyclops, and so now we have one of the most epic and memorable love triangles of all time. In X-Men 2, X-Men United, uh, Wolverine is now somewhat a leader in the organization and has to uh, protect 
a lot of the younger kids uh, because they're being attacked by this anti-mutant extremist uh, named William Stryker. Stryker does appear in X-Men Days of Future Past as a much younger version. Did I mention that William Stryker had a hand in giving Wolverine his metal implants? No? Well, that may come up. So his adult self, back to current day, uh, attacks the school, wants to take uh, all the mutants away, and so Wolverine helps to defend and protect these children. Some of these children that are memorable and will be showing up in this movie include Iceman. Iceman can control ice, very powerful. He can become ice. He is learning to control his powers and use them to the utmost of their ability. We also have Rogue. Rogue is able to touch someone and take their power, which she often does with Wolverine to take his healing ability so that she can survive some traumatic experience. Uh, rumor is Rogue has been removed from Days of Future Past, so I don't know if we'll see her, but in case we do, that's who she is. She has a kind of weird younger sister, older brother thing with Wolverine. Yeah. We also have Colossus. Colossus is able to turn his skin into metal, uh, making him near indestructible. In the other movies, he didn't use this a whole lot, and it's a little disappointing since Colossus is one of my favorite heroes. And I'm hoping in X-Men Days of Future Past, he shows this off and shows us what he can do. In the third X-Men movie, we meet another young mutant named Kitty Pryde. Uh, in the comics, her name is Shadowcat, but she is never called this in the movies. Kitty Pride is able to walk through solid objects. If she's touching someone else, they can also walk through solid objects, so she uses this to their advantage when maneuvering around villains. Now we have a bit of another love triangle here, as Bobby and Rogue have some sort of thing, uh, but now Bobby and Kitty have some sort of thing, and so we have a, another love triangle. That's two love triangles. Now at the end of X-Men 2, after William Stryker is defeated, Jean Grey sacrifices herself so that the rest of the X-Men can survive. This leaves both Cyclops and Wolverine distraught and depressed, and is very sad. Now in X-Men 3, Jean Grey comes back to life as one of the most iconic villains in X-Men history, the Phoenix. Now the Phoenix was not handled very well as X-Men 3 tried to do a lot of things and it kind of got lost in the shuffle, uh, but the main points are Jean Grey, unable to really control her powers, kills Cyclops, kills Professor Xavier, and then Wolverine has to, because he's the only one that can survive, get close enough to her and kill her to save the day. This traumatizes him as he kills the woman he loves, and so he now goes into hiding and is a hermit until he's eventually drawn out uh, in the events of The Wolverine, which is a stellar movie and you should see if you haven't already. At the end of X3, Magneto is given the supposed cure for mutant kind uh, and is unable to use his abilities. Professor X is now dead, but it's, we kind of are led to believe that he's able to take over the body of a man that's in a coma, so he may show up. So Patrick Stewart is clearly in Days of Future Past, so I don't know how he gets into his old body, if he's it, like making people see that it's him, but it's not really his body. I don't know how they're going to do it. Yeah. Now, the post credit scene for the Wolverine is one of the best post credit scenes I've ever seen. It has Wolverine, now realizing that he needs to go be a savior that he's always been, tries to return to humanity. And in an airport, he runs across Magneto, fully powered, and Charles Xavier back in his old body. And they say, Wolverine, we need your help to stop this incredible threat. And this leads directly into X-Men Days of Future Past, where Wolverine is thrown back into time to the original cast, of people in the 70s, and he must stop this huge tragic event from happening. So that's basically six movies, X-Men 1, X-Men 2, X-Men 3, X-Men First Class, Wolverine Origins, and The Wolverine. So that's what you need to know from those movies. But now here's something that you don't need to know, but it's something that was probably going to come up, maybe a reference to, something that's going to show up in the post credits. There is already another X-Men movie planned called X-Men Apocalypse. Now, I'm a huge nerd, so I know what this means. You watching this are likely not a huge nerd, so here's what it means. Apocalypse is one of the most epic and diabolical villains the X-Men have ever faced. And he's never been shown on the big screen before. He's never been played by a live actor. So this is incredible that they're going to try to do this. Apocalypse was the first mutant ever born. In ancient Egypt in the year 3000 BC, 
His name was N. Saba Nur. I say it exotic because that sounds better. He is able to change his shape. He's able to change his size. He's able to shoot out projectiles. He's able to uh, take energy. He's able to fly. He's able to do all sorts of stuff. He's near indestructible. So he's been surviving this entire time. Uh, he was born back then and people worshipped him as a god. And then he puts himself into this stasis sleep. So he'll be asleep for a long, long time, wake up, come out and conquer. All right, so he like takes over everything. Uh, people worship him. He's incredibly powerful. So eventually, uh, in some very popular storylines, Apocalypse basically takes over the world. Um, and in a flip, uh, in X-Men Days of Future Past, its mutants are hunted uh, by these sentinels and they're kind of like a dying species. Apocalypse does the opposite where now mutants are in charge and they enslave humanity. So imagine a history where this happens, he becomes a charge, he rules everything, um, and now someone has to go back in time and stop him. All right, so it's a very similar thing, but it's flipped with the humanity and mutants factor. Um, another way they could go with this is that he's been in this stasis for so long and something in this movie triggers Apocalypse waking up, which is bad news. So I'm not sure if we're gonna be in current day when Apocalypse wakes up or if we're gonna go back in time so when he is ruling, I'm, I'm not sure what's going to happen, but Apocalypse is the main villain of the next movie, and in some way will probably be referenced. So in the post-credits, uh, in the movie, keep an eye out for the big blue guy. So that is, in a nutshell, everything you need to know about X-Men Days of Future Past. To read more articles and to see other things that might be interesting to you, head over to I'mYourTargetDemographic.com. Thanks for watching. Thank you, my